Hello, everyone. This is Dallas Johnson. Thank you very much for taking the Missouri Dealer Continuing Education course. And let's get started right here. I always want to make sure that you've got the updated contact information. Obviously, you're aware we deal with the dealer licensing section with the Department of Revenue. If you ever need to mail documentation, it goes to PO Box 43, obviously in Jeff City, 65105. Uh, you can always give the dealer licensing section a phone call at 573-526-526. 3669 and then instead of listening to that big long menu option you can just click seven on your phone that takes you straight through to the dealer licensing section uh, they work very hard in Jeff City to run you know the compliance for 8,000 dealers in the state there are 8,000 dealers and obviously during renewal times at the end of the year they get pretty busy in Jeff City so they do whatever they can to support you in the operations of your dealership uh, so if you have to wait on hold for a while obviously that's part of the gig uh, I find it sometimes easier to drop them an email at dealerlic at dor.mo.gov. And you can always download all the most current dealer operating forms at modealer.com. That's the Missouri Dealer Seminars website, uh, including the Department of Revenue Dealer Operating Manual. So you can always stay on top of hopefully the, the latest forms and all of the latest happenings by going to modealer.com. Before I talk, about, talk to you about some of the latest law changes, uh, I want you to obviously be aware Missouri's legislature meets in Jefferson City from January through the second week of May every single year. So any laws that the Missouri legislature pass during that session go into effect on August 28th every year, unless the bill specifies a different date. So August 28th is the day every single year that Missouri laws change. Sometimes the Department of Revenue will print up a new dealer operating manual based on the latest laws. But what I found out here, I haven't seen a new dealer operating manual come out since 17, since September of 2017. So it's been it's been a few years since they printed up a new dealer operating manual. And in the past, you know, every September, you could just print up your Department of Revenue dealer operating manual and go through and look at the highlights in yellow. Well, they are so short-staffed, you know, uh, for the Department of Revenue. I haven't seen a brand new manual come out since September of 2017, and we've seen a lot of law changes uh, in the last couple of years. So in the, both legislative sessions, we have seen laws change. So I'm going to go over a couple of laws that have changed. In a moment, I'm going to take you back to 2018 Senate Bill 707. Dramatic changes to the way that we operated our dealerships here in the state. I'm going to go in that, kind of give you a refresher on that. And then we're going to talk about 2019 Senate Bill 89 and then 2019 Senate Bill 959. So you'll be aware of some of these changes. So Senate Bill 707 passed a couple of years ago. And this was the big dealer bill uh, down in Jeff City. In my opinion, it was a really, really bad bill. They increased a lot of our requirements. And the way I look at this, you know, we are the state's largest sales tax generators. And when you sell a vehicle to a Missouri resident, that person has to pay sales tax down at their local license bureau within 30 days. And that sales tax obviously goes into the Missouri Highway Fund. So we are the largest revenue generators for the Missouri Highway Fund. Uh, so the way I look at it, our legislators, they need to support us instead of passing bills like this. So I'm going to show you how to contact your legislator here in a little bit. So on Senate Bill 707, what happened that did increase our dealer surety bond requirements? Remember, they used to be $25,000, and now they increased that to $50,000. So we do have one of the higher bonding requirements in the United States. I think we're one of nine states that requires a dealer to have a $50,000 dealer surety bond. So it is a requirement. So if you're already licensed, which you probably are, uh, then you've seen the doubling of price of your dealer bond. So they increased that requirement. They also increased our selling requirements. If you recall in the past, we had to sell six vehicles every year. Well, Senate Bill 707 increased that to eight vehicles per year. In fact, the initial version was going to require us sell 32 vehicles every single year. And so obviously there was some uh, uh, animosity about that. And we did rise up a little bit in Jeff City and we were able to let our voices heard. It, they did increase the requirement. It didn't go to 32. It did go to eight vehicles per year. Now, we are required to submit an email, phone number with our initial application and our renewals. So 
you know, the hours of operation that we have now are on record in Jeff City. So in the past, you could change your hours at any time. Well, now our hours are on record. So if you ever want to change your hours because your official hours are not working out for you, you'll have to change the sign on your dealership. And then you're also going to have to contact Jeff City. So you want to call the dealer licensing section. They will literally pull out your old application and rewrite your new hours. So Remember, we do have to staff the dealership during those hours. So you want to always make sure the hours you have posted can be staffed by you or another or other personnel for your dealership. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, the governor did sign an executive order that does allow us to operate without a landline, which is really one of the only positive things I believe that happened in Jeff City in the last few years was elimin- for dealers was eliminating that landline requirement. So you know, the, the landline that sat on my desk in my dealership for 10 years never rang. I had my landline because that's what the law required, but I did all my phone on my cell phone, which is like most of you have probably done. But they have eliminated the landline requirement, but we still do have to have a phone number on record. So make sure when you're either applying initially or sending in your renewals that you do have a phone on that application. It's also dramatically limited the number of dealer plates that we can operate with. Uh, in the past, you know, when you were applying for the first time, you could order 50 dealer license plates if you wanted, but uh, the Department of Revenue said that that is too many, and that is probably too many for someone that's starting out for the very first time. So if you are applying for the first time, the law has changed. You can only get two dealer plates. If you want a third plate, you would have to go out and sell 15 vehicles. You can get a third plate. Then you can sell 10 more, get a fourth plate, sell 10 more, and get a fifth. But you start out with two then you sell 15 vehicles and then you can get a third. They still have the old auditing requirement. And so basically every year the state will count up all the sales that you had in one year and you'll get one dealer plate per 10 sales of the previous year. So if one year you sell 100 vehicles, the following January, you can get 10 dealer license plates. If one year you have sold 50 vehicles, the following year you can get five dealer plates. If one year you sell your minimum eight, but no more than 10, you will only be allowed one dealer plate the following year. And I want to remind you, when you're renewing your license, let's say, for example, you do qualify for 10 dealer plates. If you want to see a little bit of a reduction in your dealer insurance, then you can just operate with, say, for example, five or six instead of the 10 that you might be qualified for. So you can't actually order a lesser number of dealer plates than you actually are qualified for. So do please keep that in mind. Also, in our off-site shows, the state's always allowed us to participate in two off-site shows per year, but they did, under Senate Bill 707, unfortunately, they drew these little 10-mile circles around our dealership, and you may not participate in an off-site show that is more than 10 miles away from your dealership. So, uh, I think the franchisers had some problems with this. Um, They didn't want uh, our small dealerships coming in and interfering with them, so... Unfortunately, uh, they, they created a 10-mile circle around your dealership. So if there's an off-site show that's 11 miles away, you will not be able to participate that. And if you're in a rural area, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to participate in an off-site show because there's not going to be an off-site show within 10 miles you know, of a small rural dealership. So they did basically eliminate that requirement, in my opinion, for any dealer in a rural area. But remember, you do have to follow the guidelines if you ever participate in an off-site show. Another bill uh, during this past legislative session is Senate Bill 89. So a couple of things, some of this this is going to affect the operation of our dealerships, but many parts of it won't. Uh, Vehicle lessors now must submit a $100,000 bond. So instead of that $50,000 bond, which is required for most of us, lessors must submit a $100,000 bond. But it also modified our safety inspection exemption. So I want to talk to you about this. You are required to provide a safety inspection that is less than 60 days old at the time of the sale. I want to repeat that. Missouri dealers are required to provide a safety inspection that is less than 60 days old at the time of the sale. Unless you're selling a vehicle to another dealer, or maybe you're selling all your vehicles at a dealer auction, obviously those sales are exempt. And that being said, you know, since the state law does require a dealer to provide a safety inspection that's less than 68, 60 days old, unless one of those requirements, uh, the exemptions I just spoke of. Now, I want you to be aware, you can hand over that uh, safety inspection at 60 days old, but let's just say, for example, the customer is not able to go out and get their inspections done and their sales tax paid. They can use that for 120 days. So we provide a safety inspection that's less than 60 days old. However, say you sold a vehicle on the 58th day, the customer is able to use that 
for licensing purposes and sales tax purposes for 120 days. So, so if you sell that at the very end where it's just about to expire, the customer will actually still be able to use that for another 60 days. So for a dealer, it's 60 days. For the customer, those safety inspections are going to be good for 120 days. They also change the homemade trailer inspection requirements to all trailers, not just trailers over 16 feet. So if you're a trailer dealer or you're a trailer manufacturer, remember, ins trailer inspections are going to be uh, needed on all trailers now that you're manufacturing. So do please keep that in mind. House Bill 959 is not going to uh, affect used dealers, but real quickly here, it did change the motor vehicle franchise law for franchisers, uh, and it prohibits franchisers from coercing franchisees. So something that's happened all across the nation here, we've had certain vehicle manufacturers that have basically strong-armed the franchisers, required them to buy unreasonable equipment and things like that. And if they didn't buy it, well, then the manufacturer would just pull the franchise license. So we've seen these laws dramatically change all over the United States. It basically protects franchisers from uh, from manufacturers and coercion. So that is something they want you to be aware of. And if you are a franchisor, uh, your manufacturer cannot require you to make major changes to your property more than once every 10 years. While we're on that, one thing that changed with our dealer plates here this year is vehicle loaners. So in the past, you were able to, you were not able to put a dealer plate on a vehicle loaner. So if you had a vehicle that you were loaning out, maybe while you were re repairing a customer's vehicle, you could put, you could not put a dealer plate on that. They changed the law this year. You can put a dealer plate on a loaner. So they just changed that. You may, you cannot put a dealer plate on a service vehicle, and that's a, a truck hauling cars back and forth from the auction. We still cannot do that. That's a service vehicle. You still cannot put a dealer plate on a commercial vehicle, and that's a vehicle that you're out, you know, pushing snow with, or or uh, maybe hauling cars back and forth for another dealer. So we can never do that. But they do allow now. They just changed this. You can put a dealer plate on a loaner, okay? But we can never put it on a service vehicle or any type of vehicle. Normally, we're using our dealer plates for test drives and transport. Remember, you know, you're not just slapping that dealer plate on that RV and driving it to Yellowstone for the weekend. So that's something we need to be able to uh, be aware of. Now, everyone, as I said a little bit earlier, uh, I'm a little bit partial, but uh, I felt like that Senate Bill 707 increased our cost dramatically increased our selling requirements dramatically you know doubled our bonding prices and the way i look at it if there's a bad bill for dealers in jeff city we need to let our legislators know about it we need to contact our legislators and let them know that us the licensed dealers in the state of missouri us small business owners we are the largest revenue generators for the missouri highway fund as i said earlier when you sell a vehicle to somebody in missouri and they pay sales tax, that money goes into the highway fund. Well, all the gas tax increases, three gas tax increases throughout the state have failed here in the last few years. So our legislators need to know that we, the licensed dealers in Missouri, are the largest revenue generators for the Missouri Highway Fund, which is the fund the state uses to build roads, bridges, and maintain interstates. I wanna show you how you can contact your legislator as we're moving along here. So you can get to the uh, House of Representatives website at www.house.mo.gov or your state senate can be contacted at www.senate.mo.gov. I want to show you how to do this. That way, if we've got a bad bill going through Jeff City, we can rise up and we can talk, contact our legislator and let them know, hey, that's a bad bill. Okay, so this is the Missouri House of Representatives website that you're going to see right here. And to find your representative, you're going to go right down there to the very bottom left there. As you can see there, right here, I'm going to take you to see where it says find your representative. You can type in your address in the city that you live in right here. And for this example, I'm using the state capital's address. So say, for example, you live in downtown Jeff City. This would be your address right here. So you click go and it's going to show you, first of all, it's going to show you your state representative and your state senator. So if you live downtown, say, for example, downtown uh, Jeff City, Missouri, this would be your state senator, uh, Mike Bernsgetter, and then Dave Griffith would be your representative. And then it shows your statewide elected officials right here, uh, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the attorney general. But if you want to contact them, you can click on either one of them, or if you want to contact the governor's office or the lieutenant governor's office or any statewide official and let them know there's a bad dealer bill going through and you want to raise, you know, uh, money for the Missouri Revenue Fund, let's stop these bad dealer bills, okay, for sure. 
You can do the same with your senator. If you want to contact them directly, uh, you can go to the senate.mo.gov website and you can uh, scroll down a little bit there and you will be able to put your address. And for this example, one South Broadway, St. Louis, this shows your state senator. Say, for example, you live downtown St. Louis. You would just put your address right there and click look up legislator and you'll see uh, your senator right there that you can contact at any time or you can contact their staff. But if you jump right over here, you can email the senator, you can call them directly, or you can contact their legislative staff as well. So like I said, we definitely need to let our state representatives and state senators know when there are bad bills going through the legislature. So as you see here, state representatives can be contacted at house.mo.gov and state senates, state senators can be contacted at senate.mo.gov. Also, the thing they just changed here is license renewals last year. Every single year at the end of the year, obviously you're aware, in the past, all dealer licenses expired December 31st every single year. We have over 8,000 licensed dealers in the state. So it just overwhelmed the dealer licensing section on all these 8,000 renewals. And if you ever contacted, you know, called the dealer licensing section in December, well, obviously you couldn't get a hold of anybody. They were just too busy. They're understaffed. They work very hard, you know, renewing our licenses so we can operate our businesses. So now what they do is they stagger license renewals. So how this works, when you're getting licensed for the first time, your first three years in business, your dealer license will expire on December 31st every single year, like just like it has in the past. And always remember, when you're renewing your license, obviously you're going to have to have that law enforcement signature on the back of that application that you're going to be either uh, mailing to Jeff City or uploading, uploading through the dealer uh, portal. Now, the way it's changed though, once you've been a licensed dealer for three years, then they will allow you to get a two-year license and you will have to renew your license every other year. So once you've got three years of experience, once you've had a dealer's license for three years, then you will be able to renew your license for a period of two years. And that also means that you only have to get that law enforcement signature every other year upon renewal. So uh, don't worry, dealer licensing will always stay in contact with you and give you plenty of notice to renew your license. But like I said, the first three years in business now, your license will renew, I'm sorry, will expire on December 31st every year. After you've been a licensed Missouri dealer for three years, they'll stagger it to where you'll get a two-year license and you'll be able to renew your license for two years and only get the law enforcement signature and submit a renewal every other year after that. 